Hi, Angela. Hi. Hi. Guys, we decided to jump on a little bit early uh, and say hello. And wanted to ask you guys if you do uh, any lettering, and if so, what is your specialty? So, Angela, I'm going to ask. We all know, but do you do lettering, and what is your specialty? I do lettering, <laughs> mostly lettering. Okay. Um, I would say my specialty is um, whimsical, scripty, fun kind of lettering. Um, but I try to be um, capable of doing whatever the project needs. Mm -hmm. so I'm always working on different styles and different styles of calligraphy or using different tools so that I can come in and, and just not do the same thing all the time. Great, great. So if you're in the room, please get on the chat on the right hand side, which should be this side, <laughs> this side, right? And uh, type in if you do lettering at all or calligraphy or any hand lettered work, uh, let us know and then also your specialty. That would be great to know. And we'll just be waiting a couple minutes here as people stream in. I see people are coming in from all over the place. I know that um, I'm in Los Angeles and Angela, you're in Austin today, right? Yeah, yeah, Austin, Texas. Yeah. Did you just move there or have you always been in Austin? I'm from Michigan originally. Okay. I've been in Austin, um, my husband and I, for two, three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Three and a half years, yep. We spent a few years in LA um, and we were in Michigan uh, before that. And were you doing lettering throughout that time from Michigan and LA? I was, okay. yes, yep. Yeah. Um, so, mm -hmm. Brian is asking, where in Michigan? I lived in Ferndale for about five years. Um, I grew up in Beulah, Northern Michigan. Mm -hmm. Went to Michigan State. So. It's so pretty up there. It, really it is. is. Yeah, it especially is really at this time of year. Uh, only this time of year. <laughs> only this time. <laughs> the rest of my time in Michigan was like being kept in the house for three days because you're snowed in. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's a weird form of torture. Right. It's true. Kristen is asking if you majored in design. I majored in advertising, um, I, and I worked in advertising for a few years um, right out of college. But um, no, I didn't major in design. All, all the stuff that I use today is um, learn from the internet or trial and error kind of on my own or through a couple of friends who I can call on if I need something. <laughs> so that's, that's great. So when you, did you work in advertising at all? A little bit. I was um, a copywriter for a few years. Did some uh, like furniture spots and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. it wasn't creative enough for me. I'll say that. I didn't fit in very well. <laughs> so, does, yeah. does your uh, education in copywriting, does that help you in what you're doing now? Sure. Yeah. Um, I can't have any misspelled words and... <laughs> That's important, and I just naturally like writing and words, so um, they work. It goes together really well for doing lettering. Yeah. Kristen's asking uh, if you were a designer when you were working in advertising. No, I was always jealous of the designers. I didn't really know that I was going to be an illustrator at the time, but I liked it. Um, but I was a copywriter, so writing. That's great. Yeah. Well, Bernardo, it's good to see you, and Kristen, of course, Lee, and Mayo, and Brian. If you guys are doing lettering at all, let us know. We'd love to know who are letters in the house. Not that we'll only be speaking to you, but. And Bernardo is in the house. I see Bernardo is here. He's from Philadelphia. Cool. Yeah. He does type design, actually. Very cool. Yeah, and he went to Cooper Type. And then oh, Lee wow. is here. Lee is here. He's a designer here in California. Very cool. So it's Hello, good to have everybody. you guys here. <laughs> so um, Lee says that he loves lettering, but he feels like a hack compared to people like Angela. <laughs> oh, that's not true. <laughs> How long did uh, it take you to learn, actually? Do you know about your cumulative education? Um, I'm always picking things up. 
um, the last few years, I've started to feel super confident that um, that I can just do whatever I need to do. Um, but it just comes with time, I think. So a few years of doing it constantly. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't. There's not like a date or anything where I would say I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens slowly. That's good, and I think having a rep also helps too. Yeah, solidify that. <laughs> I can't <laughs> can't say enough awesome things about my rep. Oh, you wonderful! She's here. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get started. It's already. Um, one o'clock on the west side and three o'clock in Austin. So welcome everybody. Welcome to Topography Dojo. I'm your host, Rachel Elnar. I'm also the co-founder of Type Ed. And today we're being joined by bespoke letterer, Angela Southern. She's also an illustrator. Thank you, Angela, for joining us, for being here. You're welcome. I, I actually found you through Behance. You had done a, a This Is New York promotional mailer Mm -hmm. And that's how mm -hmm. I saw your work. Wow. Very and cool. Then, and then I think we started talking after that a mm -hmm. few years ago. Did not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a beautiful piece. Thank it, you. Let's see if I can just uh, put the link here um, in the chat bar. So if you guys are interested in seeing what I'm talking about, there it is. Uh, awesome. Judith is saying that she's a letter designer from Chicago. Yay. Chicago's Hi. in the house. Wonderful. So. Um, do me a favor, guys, and just below our uh, video feed, there's a little share button. So I know there's a lot of people registered. Not everybody is here yet. So if you'll share it out, let us let everyone know that we're getting started. Uh, Angela has a wonderful little presentation for you all. Um, so uh, we don't want to start until everybody gets here. Um, also, if you have any questions for her, we'll be answering them uh, throughout the whole session. So put the questions again underneath the questions and topics tab underneath so then people who are watching the replay can view the answers specifically and they don't have to run through the whole thing. Looks like Nicole just joined us. Hello, Nicole. Uh, do you know who she is? Uh, sh is she on the Snyder? She's on the, she's on, yes. um, the, the chat there. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. so please yeah, let yeah. everyone know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's right. So um, I want to ask you a little bit about Trader Joe's. That's sort of where you got your start, correct? Yeah, Trader Joe's has been my lettering education, pretty much. Um, I've been with them for eight years, and it's all handmade. So we don't have computers um, where we can do art on them, um, start to finish. So that's a unique, a unique challenge in the lettering world. Um, and I have some photos when we get into it of all the different materials that we use and things that we make. But yeah, and I'm still with them. Um, they're so flexible. If I need time off for this project or that, they're more than happy to work around that, which is amazing. Um, I've been with them as I've traveled from Michigan to LA to Austin, um, working with even some of the same artists um, over and over again, which is really nice. So we've had some long friendships and just learn a lot from each other too. That's wonderful. So for when you were here in Los Angeles, were you coming to headquarters? Cause they're here. Aren't they, they are um, in LA. I never, I never went to the headquarters. Oh, you never. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. Would you like to show some of the work? Sure. Okay. Screen share, huh? Yeah. All right, so let me just zoom in, go ahead. Perfect. Well, this is a uh, masonite painted with acrylic paint. And um, we made that for our new store. We opened a new store, downtown Austin, just a year ago. And this is um, my one and only mural. I painted this. It's about four by six feet. So it. This stuff only comes up when we need to open a brand new store and we're starting with a blank slate and an empty building. And so this work, is this, every store has its own style? Is it something that's put into some sort of guideline for the rest of the stores? How does that work? Every store has their own style um, tailored to the neighborhood. And 
the projects are completely up to the artists that are on the team at the time. Um, like this is a, I was inspired by Margaret Kilgallen. She's one of my favorite artists and she does a lot of um, sort of worn out looking stuff with paint. Um, she was amazing. So this is like a mural that we made out of little blocks. Um, Beautiful. Thanks. So this one's a little busy, but um, I wanted to talk about our paint markers. These are Posca paint markers on the right here. And um, all of this stuff is, is used with that. So there's a chalkboard, a little bit of a close-up of some of the coloring techniques we use with, them, with the paint markers. And um, on the right-hand side, the congrats was made with the spray paint. So we use spray paint a lot. Um, and then I did the markers over the top. This is just some everyday kind of stuff. Things are always changing out. So we do a lot of lettering super fast and it may not be perfect, but it goes out. And then maybe the next day we have to, you know, kill it and do something else. So it's, it's a good way to learn. You don't get to be too precious about anything and you just kind of burn through a lot of work at once. And is there any direction in terms of style or is it up to the artists? Um, Thankfully, at the store, there's not a lot of direction. Our uh, our captain is very appreciative of us, and I mean, they all are. They're all glad to have artists, but he gives us a lot of freedom. And so um, we've developed styles that we like over the years, and they'll say something if something is clearly bad, but um, we really like to self-moderate and just kind of keep doing what we like and try new things and stuff like that. Um, these are some demo sample signs. Do these every day. It's kind of a plastic material in the background. Um, the chalk markers work great over that. And then you can just clean it off with a cleaner. I sort of stretched my skills a little and glued a bunch of quinoa to this foam core. <laughs> That's awesome. It's something new. It was hard to put up without raining quinoa all over myself. And how, what was the process of that, may I ask? Did you sketch it out and then, um, I, how did you glue it on there? Um, just Elmer's glue. I drew the letters and then I filled them with glue one letter at a time and um, patched it up where I needed patching. <laughs> but that's the first time I've ever done anything like that. They were cool with it. They were cool with it. Wow. <laughs> um, this is foam core cut with an X-Acto knife, spray painted, hot glued together, and then I drilled it into the wall. So much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, similar kind of a technique. And the bigger stuff is made with insulation foam, which is um, purple. You can see on the left-hand side. We just get this from Home Depot, cut it up, and paint it. It doesn't take well to spray paint, um, just so you know. Mm. It will disintegrate it, but it's so much fun. I learned a lot of this from Paula Nelson. I think she's on here. <laughs> she's a wizard. <laughs> and is this for more permanent displays, or what, are, what do you use? What's the difference between using the foam core and the insulation foam? This is for more permanent stuff. Um, okay. It's it's a little more fragile. And so we like to use it in high up areas that aren't gonna be um, bumped into or anything like that. Um, things that we hang from the ceiling, it's nice and lightweight. And it has more dimension than the foam core, is that correct? It does, it's a little thicker. You can do like, um, like a faux wood grain, if you kind of carve into it lightly and it's a little more, little more eye catching. Here's a really normal looking sketch. My sketches are crazy, but I just kind of wanted to show how things start. So we needed a rosé sign. So I just started doodling and thinking of phrases and then <laughs> I decided it would, it would say that. And then the final one came out like that. And it's insulation foam, it's just gonna hang from the ceiling. Um, so that's all I have for Trader Joe's. Hopefully it gives you guys the kind of a glimpse into into what we do.
Did you want to keep going with the yeah with the next project? Okay. So the next project I'm going to talk about is for the Ritz Carlton magazine, and um, they actually have a magazine. I don't believe you can buy it in the store or anything, but they put it in all of their hotel rooms, so it's all over the world. It's kind of amazing. Um, and I did a couple of different stories in, in this issue coming out in July. So July 1st, it will be in rooms. Um, so it's a super top secret project, just so you know. <laughs> Please don't screenshot, yeah, don't screenshot this on the, uh, on the internet. <laughs> but they're, they're really excited that I'm talking about it. Um, okay. So this is what I'm given from the art director and we talk about, um, I'm just gonna be working on the right-hand side. I wanted to letter the, the headline, Cook's Country. So I get a second PDF without, without the headline and we decided to put um, the deck below so there's more room for lettering above. And what I do, I start by throwing this into Photoshop and on a separate layer, I'll draw an outline of say the bowls or the area on the top that I have to letter. And I'll print that off like this, it looks kind of funny. Um, and then I'll do a whole bunch of different rounds of lettering just to see what looks good, what style I'm going for. And I went through a couple of different styles and I ended up choosing um, a sort of an Asian looking brush style and this is a a little video um a little video to show you guys how i take raw lottery and throw it into photoshop and then turn it into a complete um, piece so it's a little small i don't know if you can see what's going on but i adjust the levels so that it's high contrast I just scanned it at about 300 DPI. Well, I guess there is audio with that. Oh. And then... Oh, we, we can't hear it, so... Okay. <laughs> okay. So I, I drug it over to the actual piece. And before, I had cut around sort of the uh, handle of the spoon and the edge of the bowl so that the lettering could tuck behind it. So that's on a layer separate. Do a color overlay and then I adjust it. And I know that it's gonna fit nicely in there because I was working with my little outline to begin with. And that's- Meaning you composed it by hand before you actually brought it in digitally, which saves a lot of time. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that's the final. Um, oh, oh nice. This is the final. It's slightly different, but slight adjustments, but that's that's the process. Hopefully it makes sense. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. So this is the opening of the story, and then it goes into the next page, and this is um, what I'm given from the client. And the lettering I need to do is on the bottom left. We wanted to make that pop. And also we wanted to have it match the headline. So we started with the headline to get basically the feel and the style of the story that we're gonna, the lettering style that we're gonna go with. And so I did the same technique and kind of played around with that style, did a whole bunch of versions and it came out like this. And I did a drop cap T in there that matches. Um, you can, if you can see the small headline, egg tartlets and coconut mm -hmm. jam, I originally we wanted to letter that, but it was really difficult because it's so small and the brushy style was, was a bit much, but um, that's me working on that. So I just spend a lot of time on everything, making it as good as I can, and if it doesn't make it to the, the real piece, that's fine, at least we tried. <laughs> this is another page with another pull quote. This is a quote pulled out of the story. It's really nice. 
Thank you. I like the colors in this one. And this is sort of what the raw rough lettering looks like. This is the last page of that story, the smaller headline done in the same style. And this is my giant folder of sketches for the whole project. There's so many pages. How many sketches is that, you I think? Just, a million. <laughs> I don't know. Is that something that it's it's you making those decisions or is the client helping you with those directions, trying pushing you to try different things or how is that process working? Um, both. This, this client is very hands-on and we did a lot of uh, phone calls and chats. Um, he had a lot of specific ideas um, and it just depends on the personality of the client and the job as to where you're going to get, whether you're going to get somebody like that or somebody who just instantly takes everything first around and says, great, we're done here. Um, so this was fun to collaborate and, and really understand what exactly they were looking for. And I'm really proud of it. It's great. It's a beautiful piece. It was, it turned out. Yeah. Thanks. So it won't be for sale, but you'll get a couple copies for yourself, right? Yeah, I'll be I'll be able to see it in person. Have more slides mm -hmm. on this, or shall I close this window out? You can close it. That's the end of that Excellent. one. Thanks for sharing that piece. It's really nice. Yeah, you're welcome. So I just wanted to ask you a, a few questions here. Um, in terms of that, the Ritz project. Mm -hmm. Did you get any direction on it should be like Asian brush lettering or is that something that you choose or how, how did that come about? I chose that um, because I felt that it was the best style for the job. Um, so the only direction I got from the start was the initial um, layout where it was just in sans serif kind of straight on the page. And I Googled uh Kuala Lumpur, the the city, and and realized it was a a good fit. So, plus I love using the brush. Um, I used this Pentel brush here, and uh, the Pentel brush pen. Yeah. Yes, the Pentel brush pen. So. It was and so, how much research does it take? I mean, does are you doing a couple hours, couple minutes? days do you take a look at what Asian brush grip looks like or how do you go about that? Yeah I hope I'm not offending actual um, calligrapher masters <laughs> you know that do that kind of thing. I did look up famous calligraphers from that area of the world for some inspiration um, and an Asian brush lettering and I kind of gave myself time to simmer on it you know, right at the beginning, I do some research and, and brainstorm and then um, it's just gonna, it's just gonna be on my mind for a couple of days and I'll keep going back to it. And um, it wasn't a super rush deadline. So I had the luxury of being able to simmer and think and try things. And I ended up with that one. I'm really glad that they liked it. And when you say it, it wasn't was a super rush deadline, how, what is your typical deadline? Um, sometimes I'll have maybe like four or five days total from, from hearing about it to when it's finally due. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh-huh, but it's so fun. I love being in, on, on a deadline. It's weird, but it's nice. But, also, it doesn't give me too much time to like, um, stress right. out. Right. And it also you forces know. the client to make decisions pretty quickly, right? <laughs> That's true. Right. Thanks very right. quickly. Yeah. Right. Let's um, answer one question Good here thing. at the bottom. I think it was about what you were um, showing. And Lee is asking, I recently learned the tracing paper overlay trick to revise hand lettering, spacing, and such. And it blew my mind as a way to adjust artwork. Do you have any simple tips like this you could use that you use in your process? That's an awesome trick. Yes, it's kind of life changing. I use um, regular paper from like Office Depot or something. It's a it's a little thicker, but I use that with a light pad, and so it acts as tracing paper. Um, 
just get something thick enough that doesn't bleed mm -hmm. um, because I go through so much I can't spend all my money on paper it'd be nice so I use a light pad and that is that has been one of the coolest things um, it has a dimmer on it it's by uh, accurate mm -hmm. it's called a light tablet um, another trick is um, to get a better sense of, of what your of kind of like the spatial arrangement of your lettering um, I like to turn it upside down or flip it around backwards and look at it from like a foreign perspective and then you're just kind of looking at shapes and that will help you see oh this area is is empty and this area is too crowded or the this the y doesn't match the p or you know something like that that's another trick it's great leah i hope that helps those are very good tips <laughs> and i'm and do you not use tracing paper also because the pen leaks through the paper or um I just never really needed it. I um, I have some. I think it's just a bit thin, and uh, I need the ink to dry really quickly so that I can throw it in a pile or scan it right away. I, f I feel like with tracing, tracing paper, it stays wet a little longer than I would like. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to think what my second question was there. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, do you find certain pens that dry quicker or... Um, that's one of the reasons I love the Pell art brush. It dries so fast as opposed to an actual paintbrush and ink. Um, I love using a real paintbrush um, if I can, but it's a little messy and uh, it does take a little longer to dry. Yeah. Cool. Um, we have another question from Linda. Can you tell us how mm -hmm. you broke into the business? Hi, Grandma. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> um, my agent, my amazing agent, Christina Snyder and Kat, um, they saw potential in my work four years ago, and they are so well connected and so good at what they do. Um, and then everything is kind of snowballed. So you get a job from someone, and then most of the time, the, that leads to the next job, you know, they'll you put it on your website and then someone uses that as a reference and then you do something new and they use that new one as a reference and it keeps going and going. Um, so it's just been fortunate and I work super hard. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and so, but, you, but before you had a rep, you were still doing lettering work, right? I was, yes. It was kind of more illustrative. It was half illustrative, half lettering. I had some greeting cards that I'd done for Trader Joe's. Um, um, so I was doing lettering, yeah, before. Trader Joe's. I had a website. Trader Joe's must have been a, a great training ground because you're doing it every day and they need things yeah. very fast. And yes. then it also gets exactly. scrapped very fast. Like it's not something that you put on a pedestal and it's gonna be up there for years, right? Me. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely learn to have a thick skin when it comes to my artwork and separate it from myself. So if someone says something bad about it, it doesn't ruin my day. I'm just like, oh, how, how could I make it not bad? Right. Um, or depending on what the project is, it might not be bad art. It's just not the right style or something like that. Well, on the Trader Joe's team, is, are there a lot of artists? The team I'm on now, there are two of There's us. two of you. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Depending on the store and how busy they are, you can have um, from one to maybe three or four. Just depends. And you're assigned different projects, or is it something comes up and whoever's open takes it, or how does that? How does the work get divvied up? Yeah, whoever's open. Sometimes a project will come in that we both really want to do, and we're like, okay, <laughs> who's gonna do this one? <laughs> Or we'll trade off and on, or plan ahead if there's a if there's a plan. Um, but yeah, it's it's not competitive or anything like that. And we just um, we plan it too by our schedule. You know when things are due. Often it's just like who's going to be around and who can get it done. It's great. I mean the the whole hand lettering culture part of Trader Joe's is so ingrained in their brand that when you see it, mm -hmm. I don't think of it as oh this is so unique i always think of it oh it's perfect the branding of trader joe's so everywhere you go you I love that yeah love it 
Thank mm -hmm. you, Linda, for asking the question. Um, Bernardo is asking, on that video, it looked like you iterate on paper until you have the final design. Is that your general process or do you cut and paste from different rounds? Um, I do cut and paste. Sometimes I'll have, like in that headline, I'll have two words. Maybe the first word is perfect and the client says, yeah, that's perfect, but we just need to fix the bottom. So I can print out um, the the file with just the first word and then go in on a second sheet of paper and do the second word and then Photoshop them together. Um, it's a good place to start. Um, so, so it's pretty much there when I scan it in, but then Photoshop is really helpful for, for tweaking it. And um, I have a drawing tablet that uh, I couldn't live without now. It took me a while to make the jump, but I'm so glad I have it. It's very helpful for Photoshop t uh, tweaking and being accurate with little things. And what pen template do you use, may I ask? Is it, um, how do you say it? Wacom? <laughs> Wacom yeah. tablet. Wacom. Yep. Or Wacom, I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. Great. Mm hmm That's good. Um, may I just ask you a question? Do you always work in Photoshop or do you do you ever work in Illustrator? Do you take any of your lettering work and put, in, put it into a vector? Yeah. Yes. There are a couple of different ways to do that. Very rarely will I need to, um, but I can. I just am more comfortable in Photoshop, but it's it's totally piece of cake. Like once the work is, is set and finalized, mm -hmm. I can take it over and then just convert it into one solid um, vector image. And there's not very many instances where, where a client asks you to do that? No. Really? I'm amazed. There's not. I'm amazed. It's, yeah. Yeah. And the reason why I'm amazed is sometimes I would think they would use it. Well, if you're doing editorial work, probably not reusing the work. But if you're doing mm -hmm. something that they would reapply to many different items, right, then that's when you would need to have that. Yes. Factor. Yes. Mm -hmm. More on, like, advertising campaigns and things like that. Right. So. Bernardo said, I feel the same way about my Wacom. It took me a while to get into it, but now I love it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone should take the jump and get one. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, so Kat is asking a question. In, in hmm. terms of the many art creative directors you've worked with, what are the qualities of the ones who are the most fun to work with? Do you prefer the ones who really give you a lot of creative freedom or do you prefer having more direction and a very specific brief? That's a good question. See, I'm um, going to challenge you today. <laughs> I, I like not to be like boring, but I like a mix of both. I, I don't like to be over direct. I don't think anyone really does, you know, um, but I think it's a natural, it's great when it comes naturally, when you start vague and I'm given a lot of freedom to kind of s set the tone of the lettering. You know, I can pick the style um, and, and kind of get the ball rolling. And then as it progresses, I do appreciate feedback on specific things. Um, so I'm not an editorial designer by trade, but I want to learn as much as I can about it. And so I'm always picking things up from specific feedback that art directors give me in that in that way, which is helpful. So it's good. Do you usually quote your projects by rounds? I mean, do you say, okay, this piece, I'll include this price just for what, like two or three rounds of revisions, or how does that work exactly? It's usually planned out um, from the start. We'll say um, sketches, and then a round is due this day, and then we'll do another one and then that'll be the final. Um, that's that's typically how it goes, it's sort of planned out. And do you ever have it and that's, like the, the client does not like it by the end of the third round or whatever and you have to actually initiate more rounds or how does this, how did that work? Never, <laughs> it's always perfect. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't remember that ever happening, um, but if it does, it's, uh, if, if, if I've done everything um, well and come to the agreed final point and then 
something crazy happens, then there, you know, for that extra craziness, there's a there's a fee um, generally, but that's really rare, and their clients are very understanding. You know, that's just um, that's normal. That's great. Okay, cool. Thank you, Kat. Thanks. <laughs> that's a good question. So I wanted yeah. to ask you a little bit about some of the other work other than editorial. How did you get into the greeting card stuff? Yes, um, working at Trader Joe's. It was maybe five, six years ago. I just thought the quality of their greeting cards uh, could use some improvement. And I didn't see any hand lettered greeting cards. And it was, um, so it was hard to, it was hard to get a hold of them. I had to kind of search around and call a few people within Trader Joe's to find the company. But um, I sent them some sketches that I, I was on my lunch break, like drawing a thank you card. I was like, they're gonna love this. <laughs> I sent it over and that did turn into a card. And then from there I did, um, I think I've done like 20 greeting cards for them over the years. Um, so that's, yeah, that's not an editorial thing. It's something, something different. Mm -hmm. That's how I got into that. I took a, I kind of took a chance, um, but I was just starting out. So you saw basically so. a hole in the, in the landscape, right? And it just needed to be filled. <laughs> and so, yeah, I guess so. Have you um, chased any other client work like that? Let's see. Um, when I was in LA, a friend of mine was getting too busy for her, um, her greeting card work with American Greetings. And so she was able to give them my contact info. And I've been doing lettering for them. It's a, um, they usually turn it into an animated greeting card, which is pretty fun to see afterwards. Wow, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Animated. That's a good side. Okay, thing. cool. Mm -hmm. um, the you had beautiful work from the Wall Street Journal. I saw those pieces, and they're all whiskey bottles. Can you tell me a little bit about that project? Sure. The um, Wall Street Journal started a message in a bottle series, and they asked me to letter a pull quote from the story. So they basically take um, a famous author and they send them a bottle of something and then they'll write it up and then, um, and then I illustrate the quote. And uh, I use a lot of the same principles I was talking about with, with the uh, story of, I showed earlier. I'll kind of simmer on it and Google the bottle and Google things related to that kind of liquor I wish I could try it. <laughs> Let me see if I can find but, another uh, Behance right now, so I can yeah, so I can share it. Um, cool. This way people know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, this hand lettering paired with the photo. I love lettering and photography together. It's just a great contrast. Hello. Okay. There it is. See me? Yes. Okay. There we are. That's the one thing I said that I hope wasn't going to happen, and that happened. So I guess I won't screech oh. my screen. It's all right. I'm glad you showed it. <laughs> now they know what we're talking about. Right. Okay. So then, in terms of the style for the bottles, I mean, did you change the style per author, mm -hmm. or how did you go about that process? Yeah, they are um, so amazing. They give me free reign to choose a style that I think fits best. Mm -hmm. And as they accumulate, it's getting harder and harder to differentiate from the, the bottles that I've done before. Um, 
The next one coming up is a, uh, it's a whiskey with a sort of a, like a Southern flair to it. So I'm thinking what kind of sort of cowboy lettering is out there? Does that even exist? What's gonna look good next to it? And I also wanna make it um, unique um, when you look at the group as a whole, I don't wanna have the same style of lettering over and over again. Right, and how many mm -hmm. bottles have you done total? Um, this one is um, like 23rd, 24th. Wow, that's a lot of pressure to, to differentiate them all. It's getting there, but it's so fun. It's a good challenge. It's a really good challenge. It's a really yeah. beautiful um, series, and we'll definitely include the link afterwards here. So I don't want to show everyone again. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it's on my site. Right. And then on, on some of the other covers, so you've done a lot of work for Hudson Valley, for Chicago Magazine, uh, Ritz Carlton. How did you, do they just see what you've done before? Or how, how does that, how do you get that work? I, you're right. I think a lot of it is that they've seen something I've done before. And then um, that, that helps them envision it for their own purpose and their own use. And so, a lot of things do snowball and are like used as a reference for the next job. Totally. A lot of magazine covers like lately with the, with my lettering. It's great. And, and how do you differentiate like for people who are doing lettering or getting interested in getting into the business, how do they differentiate their style against other artists? Um, what would you recommend? I think, I would recommend, um, you know, look at other people's work that you like, but not too much. You know, I think it's good to start off um, like copying is okay in your sketchbook and that will get you maybe, a, it's a way to kind of think like the, like the person, like, oh, how did they form that letter? How do they do this? But but you wanna be careful to leave it there and and not, definitely don't use anyone's style where you're getting paid for it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. If it makes you kind of nervous or you get that like weird, uneasy feeling, you should probably change it up and just spend a lot of time working on stuff and, and just do a lot of lettering um, as much as you can. And then your style emerges and you can't copy someone, you know, if you're, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but everyone has their own style and I think that it will come out easily over time with just working a lot and being aware of what's out there and being aware of when you tend to copy people or what you might be leaning towards and watch out for it. And you're self-educated in terms of the lettering. So who are some of the artists that you were looking at? Um, Ray Fenwick was like one of my first lettering, I was like a big fan of his, um, I'm not sure what he's doing now, um, Jessica Hish and, um, Mary Kate McDevitt, I love them, and, uh, I don't, can't, I can't think of a lot of them, That's okay. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah. Not, not a problem. I put you on the spot for that one. <laughs> That's okay. <but laughs> I was trying to think back to the very beginning, you know. And do you feel like there are contemporaries of yours who share similar styles with you or who are doing things about the same or are in sure. their part, point of career like, like you are? Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird to be like, I'm on the same page as so-and-so. I don't feel like... I don't know. You always look at someone and think that they're just killing it, but everyone has their their process. Um, I think I think sometimes my lettering looks a little. Oh, there's it's just so popular, like right now, um, right. hand lettering, script lettering, modern calligraphy. Um, yeah, I love the Friends of Type guys. There's the oh, collective. Yes. I like everything that they do. Um, uh, Friends of Type includes also Eric Marinovich, right? Yeah, so good. Yes. yes, 
And I think the Friends of Type, just for people who don't know who they are, is they started, I think it's two or three guys, maybe three guys, and they just decided to do something lettering every single day. So they started an account called Friends of Type, and it's just blown up. Yeah. Of course. The quality it's been is, years. Right. <laughs> right. Overnight, five years in the making. <laughs> right, right, right. But that's, they're great to follow as well. And I do like Jessica Hish as well, but she does a lot of things, not just hand lettering. Right. Yeah. 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 But her work is really good. And Ray Fenwick, I'm interested in who who is that? Um, let's see. This is just a book of postcards that he did. So I was instantly drawn to goofy lettering and illustration and type. Um, like a long time ago, this is probably like seven years old or something. Um, one of my early inspirations. Very, very colorful work. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah, I like bright stuff. So what's the next project for you? What's, what else is coming down the pipeline? The next project is uh, another Wall Street Journal um, message in a bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got that information today, so I'm going to start on that. And I have a week to do it, which is cool. Um, and then there's a potential project, but um, I don't know if it's going to happen, but it'd be really exciting to... Um, work with YouTube folks, so we'll see. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. And will it be on YouTube or is it, can you tell us a little bit about it or no? Um, I don't want to get in trouble, Kat. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. <laughs> it won't be on YouTube, a it's, a, it's a little, um, it'd be like a uh, bookmark for children for reading month. <laughs> oh, cool, thanks. Kat says you want to get in trouble. <laughs> okay. The coolest bookmark you have ever seen. Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and is there a client or a project that you would love to work on? Oh. Um, a dream project. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. No? Okay. <laughs> I can't think of anything. Um, Not working with photographers is amazing. It would be, it would be a dream to team up with a with a photographer for another project. Um, how about this? Annie Leibowitz, if she calls me and wants to do lettering with, yeah, that, that would be a dream project. <laughs> we'll put that out there. And that would be somewhat close to the This Is New York project? Yeah. I mean, you work with like a photographer for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Spencer Heffern is a photographer on that. And um, he had all the photos and had done little interviews with all the people and had quotes Oh, that was a New York cookbook. So you lettered around the people mm -hmm. after they were photographed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you worked with Annie Leibovitz, it would be nice if you could actually do the direction for it, right? You would choose what the lettering is first, and then she would take the photos around the, the quotes. That would be wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, your process is your lettering in spaces that art directors have given you. Correct. correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. you have to learn how to work with multiple different sizes and shapes of canvases. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes um, you have to sacrifice the style of lettering because it's uh, maybe it won't fit in that tiny little space or it's hard to read or something like that. So, um, yeah, I like the challenge. I like problem solving. There's definitely some of that in there. And do you find that difficult for covers? Because covers have a lot yeah. or have very little real estate and a lot of content. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a puzzle. It's sort of putting the puzzle together and um, it depends on the photo too. Some covers are shot specifically for lettering. So they'll have a central image and then space around the side. Um, it's tricky when the cover is not shot for lettering, but maybe the art director um, is super good and is able to kind of find a little niche or a little little part in the in the corner or um, something like that, and then you just kind of work with it. But it's great when when the photo is shot with lettering in mind from the start. Awesome. So, guys, if you have any other questions, let me ask you to put them under the questions and topics underneath. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. If there's no other questions from the group, then we'll uh, finish up here in a little bit. So uh, 
Angel, my question for you is, if I was going to get into lettering, what type of equipment and tools do I need to get started? Um, I would say um, you can even just start with a normal pencil and paper, a normal paper. Depends on how much you want to spend. You can get um, get a brush pen and and get a feel for it. Um, this is another pen that I really like, the Tombow. Uh, it's the blue hard body. It has a nice has like a nice um, felt tip on there, and it's it's pretty resilient. I'm pretty heavy handed, so um, I like the tougher. The harder tips. Mm -hmm. um, what else would I recommend? Is that the dual brush pen or is that a, a different type of Tombow pen? A different type of Tombow. Oh, okay. One, one end on it. Ah, I see. That's the one end. Um, yeah, what would I recommend? I don't, oh, I think you told me it was a Tombow Fudin Suki brush pen. Is that correct or no? That sounds right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then so other than pencils and paper, what else do you usually use? Um, these pens and my light pad, my light tablet, um, the Wacom, Wacom tablet. And uh, I have a real basic printer. It's really helpful. Photoshop. And the the, the Paskey paint markers, is that something that you use for sketching or is that for production pieces? For production pieces, final oh. final artwork. Um, if I'm making a chalkboard and I want to use the, the Pasca pens, um, it's easy enough to use a pencil actually underneath and then sketch what you need to get the basic layout set with mm -hmm. the pencil and then you can just erase it when you're done. Great. Well, I love your your very very bold style, which attracted me to the this is New York piece in the first place. And I love to see how your style just expands across all the other magazine covers and all the editorial work that you've been doing. Thank you. So yeah, we'll be still watching you. Okay. As you keep as you keep growing, especially in the editorial stuff, I can't. I would love to see the Ritz Carlton work, even though we can't do that. I'll put that on my website as uh, as soon as I can. Oh great, mm -hmm. great. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for spending time and sorry about the technical difficulties, but um, I, I'm going to put some of these links here on the chat on the side and thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, it looks like, oh, let me just check the chat real quick. Melissa, Melissa got here late, uh, but she's thrilled to hear you talk. She's at List Letters and let me just see when the cool. thing... Uh, there was one more question, I think, from Kristen about your portfolio. Oh, how many projects do you run at the same time, she's asking? Um, sometimes it'll be like three at once. Um, sometimes just one at a time. It, it just depends. It's funny, like when it rains, it pours, you know, like right before I leave for a vacation, I'll probably have like three things do the day before I fly out and uh, that's it's funny but it, it works like that sometimes so it depends and having weak uh, time spans is great because you can just get them finished in a week and they're all done right yeah yeah um, I mean yeah I like the short time span yeah our projects are usually three months so we're looking at them for a long time <laughs> right designing types yeah. type uh, fonts and stuff Yes. Yeah. Wow. That takes a lot of patience. It does. Well, thank you again. Thank you, Angela. So much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, You're it was welcome. a lot of fun. Yeah. That's great. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, I'll put some more links and I'll send a follow up. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day too. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.